Good morning, Willowbrook. Today's devotional will continue in John chapter 14, verses 22 through 31. The disciples are still asking Jesus questions. And in verse 22, Judas, not the betrayer, but the brother of James, asked Jesus, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? He couldn't understand. I'm sure all the disciples thought the Messiah would show himself in all of his glory to the world. But Jesus answers, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teachings. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own, but they belong to the Father who sent me. Then he says, All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Then Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Well, the world then and now gives selfishly, sparingly, always expecting something in return. But Jesus gives something money can't buy. He gives the peace of forgiven sins and eternal life and an everlasting relationship with God. And he gives it freely and lovingly. And it's his to give. He's about to purchase it for us with his blood. So he tells them and us, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I'm going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad I am going to the Father. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. The prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me, but the world must learn that I love the Father, and I do exactly as the Father has commanded me. Well, Jesus knows that the time of his betrayal is drawing near. He knows that Satan has no power over and he knows the Father's will is for him to go to the cross and purchase salvation for us. So he goes voluntarily, without any resistance, to show the world his love for the Father and his love for us. Now the disciples are confused about all this being said, and they're not quite sure what's about to happen. They're probably wondering what will happen to them when Jesus goes. But what they did not understand at this moment was that soon they would receive the most precious gift outside of salvation, that God has ever given to man. In verse 23, Jesus tells them, the Holy Spirit will come and make his home in them. And they're probably unsure of just what that is. They're not sure what he's sending them. And maybe some of us are confused too. So let's dive a little deeper into the Holy Spirit. If you want to understand who God is, you need to understand all of who God is. When people talk about the Trinity of God, they're talking about God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now getting your head around the difference between God the Father and God the Son is one thing. But many of us struggle to grasp who the Holy Spirit is in a way that we could explain it to someone. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God in the life of a believer. God sends the Holy Spirit to live in us at the time we become believers. The Holy Spirit indwells us and is the one working daily in our hearts and minds. He communicates directly with us to help us live a holy life. The Bible speaks of many jobs that the Holy Spirit does in our life. Jesus said the Spirit would be our counselor, helper, teacher, comforter, and guide. He would be the revealer of truth. He would help us understand clearly and remember God's Word. He would be the giver of our spiritual gifts, and He would be the producer of our spiritual fruit and be the giver of knowledge. Well, we all know that all believers are certainly not full of the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, and kindness, and self-control. But if every believer has the Holy Spirit permanently living in them, why are they not all showing these fruits? The Holy Spirit indwells all believers. This is a fact. But being indwelt by the Spirit and being full of the Spirit are two entirely different things. In John 7, Jesus says, If anyone is thirsty... Let him come to me and drink. Anyone who believes in me, streams of living water will flow from within him. Look at these tools. They all have a purpose. Just like the Holy Spirit in our lives, they do many different and specific jobs. These tools, they all run on the same battery. But when the battery is fully charged, they're powerful and they do a great job. I can use them today but to use them tomorrow, I must remove the battery and plug it into the charger. 
when it spends enough time on the charger, it'll power up and all these tools will be good for another day of work. So when we spend time in God's word, we spend time in prayer and we're obedient, God's Holy Spirit will power us up to a full charge and we'll be able to use all of the wonderful tools and gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us. So plug in, power up, and face every day with a full charge. Stay thirsty, my friends. Have a great day, Willowbrook.